This is a clip from our brand new show. Very, very exciting new show. NBA Weekend Best Bets with the Whale Capper. To check out the entire show, hit the link at the bottom of the screen. It's available exclusively on odds.com. Okay, the last game that Whale Capper is dropping for us, a very nice one. I love it. Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Golden State Warriors, 18 and 15, 7 and 9 on the road at the LA Lakers, 22 and 11, 9 and 7 at home. Staples Center, Los Angeles, California. Warriors won two straight. They play Friday night at home versus Charlotte. They're coming off a 111 107 win at Indiana on Wednesday night. We spoke about it off the top in that Pacers game. The fact that they could win the game going 5 of 26 from 3, Steph Curry going 1 for 11 is an excellent sign. It's just such a good sign for this basketball team moving forward. Wiggins goes for 15. He scored in double figures every game this season. That's good for him because he's someone I've, you know, who, whom we at one time loved up in Canada and have given up on. I mean, we don't even we don't even talk about him. We want nothing to do with him. Uh, you know, we question his character, and we watch Butler abandon that Timberwolves team, and for the right reasons. And Wiggins was one of the problems there. Oubre finishes with 17 points. That's the first time in five games he didn't hit 19. He's playing good basketball. Steph Curry's streak of 14 straight games of 25-plus uh, came to an end. He finished with 24. Wiseman returns for wins over the Knicks and Pacers. They're clearly a stronger group with him in the lineup. So when this game pops off, will the Lakers be in the midst of a five-game losing streak, or will they have snapped it Friday at home versus the Blazers? And that game is tonight in a couple hours. They get Dennis Schroeder back. That'll be a big deal. AD remains out of the lineup. The Lakers' disappointing play came to a head in that 114-89 loss at Utah Wednesday night. And I believed in the cape of LeBron James. Now, I, I cashed the under, which was very simple and easy, and that helped. That helped. But, look, I was very wrong on the cape being put on LeBron. And, and I, I took his points, rebounds, and assists. And... You know, that went from 46 and a half to 47 and a half. That was a mistake. And there's going to be mistakes. And I'm not afraid to mention it. I lost with the Lakers plus eight and a half. I lost with LeBron, catch the under. And I'm not on the Blazers game tonight. I'm not sure if you are attacking it well, but I can't wait to hear your breakdown and what, you're, what you are anticipating here with Friday night's games for both of these teams. So take it away, uh, Warriors, Lakers. So I'm not betting this Lakers Blazers game because this is a very this is an information finding game. And in fact, whatever I see tonight is going to inform a lot of my handicap and my play uh, what I ultimately play on the Sunday game, <clears throat> because in all honesty, I see the Blazers and the Warriors are like carbon copies in terms of just just general team level statistical snapshot. These are really similar teams. And so We've seen LeBron, we've seen uh, Frank Vogel and, and Jason Kidd and company. We've seen them make decent adjustments at halftime of games when they have needed to get a fix. And they the last four losses, I don't really hang much of that on them. Like losing Anthony Davis is massive. They've had a, a you know a number of other uh, kind of small injuries that kind of went under the radar that impacted them in a bunch of these games. Um, and they played some close ones too. You know the Heat game came down to the last possession. The Wizards obviously went to overtime. Uh, you know LeBron makes a couple of bunnies or you know free throws here and there. They aren't on a four game losing streak. So it's a it's a very um, you know, I think it's a little bit of a misleading uh, conclusion to say the Lakers are as cool as the, you know, the market made them at least last game. What were they? Uh, nine, eight, nine point underdogs to the jazz. Like that was a pretty disrespectful number, I thought. And, you know, it kind of telegraphed that, you know, somebody knew the Lakers weren't going to give you 100 percent in that game. And sure enough, they didn't. Um, but I think you'll get 100 percent out of the Lakers tonight. I'm interested to see what they do in terms of defensive adjustments, especially are they trying to chase guys off the three point line? Um, like, are they putting a bigger body on um, on uh, Damian Lillard? Uh, does that work? Uh, you know, because, you know, I, I, right now I'm inclined to lean Lakers in this spot against the Warriors. Um, they played earlier this season. The Warriors came away with a victory. It wasn't an especially impressive performance, uh, you know, but it, it was a victory nonetheless. And uh, to a degree, I think the Lakers can take a lot away from that and adjust for this game. Uh, market wise, uh, it's interesting. I would ex have expected the Blazers to be about eight and a half point dogs if Anthony Davis was healthy. And so the fact that they're five here tells me the market thinks Dave AD against a team like the like the Blazers is worth about three and a half points. Uh, I would, again, expect a very similar market shape for Sunday's Lakers Warriors game, uh, total in the 222 to 225 range, uh, and then about 
five and a five or five and a half points for the Lakers. Um, if we see some signs that the Lakers defense is uh, dialed in against this Portland team tonight, especially in the second half, then I'm going to get involved with the Lakers on Sunday as well. Wow, just a fascinating breakdown. How exciting for all of us to see how you look ahead at these matchups. Uh, I enjoyed this immensely. Uh, let's just quickly review Whale Capper's action. We start 8 p.m. on Saturday night, and it is the Indiana Pacers, and the market's already moving towards the New York Knicks, and Pacers are playing tonight, so that'll be very interesting. Then at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, he's on the Mavericks. Uh, we expect Chris Stapps Porzingis to be in the lineup, announced in the lineup when he does. There'll be likely a market move in their direction, so he wants to take the Mavericks on the opener against the Brooklyn Nets. Then on Sunday, we have the Celtics and, and the Wizards in a very tough, tough spot. Sorry, that is my – I have a uh, two-week-old son there in the background. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the Celtics, and we're going to see what they do tonight, Friday night, and then uh, Wales backing them on Sunday. And then on at 8 p.m., it's an information situation where both teams are in action tonight, Friday night. And if Whale sees the Lakers lo locked in defensively, <laughs> locked in defensively, then Jimmy Jr., not a Lakers fan. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's not happy with your selection there. Not happy with your selection there. Um, and uh, we still haven't finalized the name yet, Whale, but, you know, we're in Toronto and, uh, we, you know, the rich sports history of Toronto, we're very close to uh, naming him Carter uh, after Vince and Joe nice. and Jay-Z and President Carter, who's still building homes as a nine-year-old. There you have it. A uh, little bit of a surprise ending there. Um, well, <laughs> you have you have a spectacular podcast, a deep dive podcast, Mondays and Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. I absolutely love it. Uh, could you tell our listeners a little bit about the podcast and what's coming yeah. up? Oh, of course. Uh, we do a pretty heavy duty NFL handicap during the regular season of the NFL. And then once the NFL regular season is a wrap, uh, we rotate into evergreen topics. Um, you know, this week we talked about bankroll management. We had a, a guy who's been trading, um, you know, working for sports books and was, a, was an active trader uh, across the pond in the UK uh, for about 15 years. We interviewed him and got some insight into how that operation works and what you can learn from that and how you can improve your handicap for, uh, you know, when, you know, just in, in uh, you know, seeing what it's like to you know, behind the counter and the decision making. So um, evergreen uh, industry related stuff will carry throughout the rest of this uh, off season. And of course, we'll, we'll do some standalone podcasts, you know, for the big events, the Kentucky Derbies, uh, the, the Masters, the NFL draft, um, you know, that there's Euro soccer coming up this summer that I'm excited about. And the Olympics, of course, is going to be a fun handicap as well. So, um, we'll do, we'll do, we'll be, uh, we'll be hitting all, all things sports betting throughout the rest of this off season and, uh, check us out at the deep dive podcast, deep dive podcast, Monday and Wednesday night at 8 PM Eastern and follow our man, the whale capper on Twitter at whale underscore capper, man. What a fun thing we're doing here. NBA weekend, best bets with the whale capper. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, our odds, uh, cappers that we work with every day they uh, absolutely love your insights so thank you for sharing them with us my friend i love it man and if there's anything you take away from this podcast if you can think ahead a couple of games about a you know a specific spot or how a team is you know matches up um you will be blown away at how much that will help you improve your handicap i have been this season now that i've been forced to kind of think ahead in terms of coming up you know creating content for the nba is tough such a short shelf life. But uh, if you if you do look into the future and you really think about the numbers and what the market's going to open in that, um, it really is incredible how much it can help you. Uh, it's well put, well put. <laughs>